Hey guys, so today I'm going to tell you a story about how I got uh, my first Suzuki Shogun and what really transpired me getting one. So, uh, you know, I have to go back to my college time to actually tell you what exactly uh, the scene was, you know, why it was important for me to own a Shogun down the line. So, um, it was back in college uh, when, you know, we guys were segregated mainly, you know, I'm, I'm talking about people who love bikes, mainly, you know, the ones who either owned one or would, would like to own one. So, we had different groups of people. So, there was a group, a bunch of people who were like RX, fanatics so they were all like you know really great with girls they used to mingle around with girls a lot uh, you know they were good with girls very popular with girls very you know charismatic folks that we had in college and then there were those studious kind of people who you know used to own a KB100 or a KB125 at that time. So, you know, and then there were some very, you know, weird people who, you know, at that time used to buy a samurai. Like nobody used to buy a samurai at that time. Samurai was uh, not that popular in Kerala. It was, it might be popular elsewhere, but, you know, there were very less number of summarize that you see in college maybe you know people would buy but not college kids so those were guys who were like very bright very studious people so they never used to mingle around much with others they were like usually loners then we had a group of kids who were like different you know these were kids who would do crazy things like you know they would be people who would you know go do crazy rallies who would bet upon hill runs that we used to have you know very popular in Kerala especially around uh, Trivandrum which is the Ponmudi hill run so these kids would compete with you know uh, shops who performance shops who would build you know custom build rx and all so these guys will compete with their stock bikes so these were people that your parents would typically be very afraid to let you mingle with you know these are not your regular kids that you would you know like to mingle around with so you know in your parents eyes these were kids who used to be like you know people who were on drugs but their high was something entirely different. Their high was speed and their high was this awesome sound that this machine makes. So, you know, the war kept on going. There were people who were like crazy fanatics, shogun lovers, you know. And then there was this RX group. So, you know, I, you, you might not have taken much time to guess that you know I am an RX guy because I have mostly all the RX bikes which were produced in India like you know different versions of it and also you know I am a Yamaha fanboy so that is the reason why you will see me biased uh, so I too used to you know kind of hate the Shogun like I don't know there was no reason for me to hate it uh, it was beautiful, first of all, sounded awesome. But still, you know, when you're a college kid, you were not somebody who would go with logic and stuff. So, you know, this this was a hate without a logic. It was like, you know, we, we are not people who are going to go for Suzuki bikes, no matter how great they are. So we used to hate them. So we had our friend circle wherein you know most of us used to have Yamaha bikes or would pray to own one once day I was not the fortunate one so I never had one uh, in college uh, 
of my own but i used to borrow sometimes i used to get the rx100 from my cousin not the one that i own now my another cousin basically uh, my cousin who gifted me my rx100 his younger brother had an, another rx100 so we used to i used to borrow that sometimes and then uh, i also took a job in college for uh, you know a training institute so i used to do a bit of marketing for them uh, during my free time so that also gave me an rx so our circle was strong and it used to grow and uh, you know we used to have new friends buying rx so at that time you can still walk into a showroom with a checkbook and you can buy an rx uh, 135 rx 100s were like out of production at that time but still you know in kerala or let me say rest of the india rx 100s are the only uh, amazing bikes that yamaha ever produced that's what people think but you know i i tend to differ with them so there was no other option because my friend you know wanted to get a bike which looked like an rx 100 so he went for an rx 135 uh, which came in a special variant which had that uh, you know twin lines on the tank so it was also called the tiger so we actually uh, started from college so our college and this showroom where he was supposed to go and take the delivery of his bike is about 67 68 kilometers so you know this distance was usually covered by us in about 20 minutes and if somebody knows you know the kerala routes they know the you know road between uh, Trivandrum and Koilon especially in the late 90s early 2000s uh, you would know that that 20 minutes uh, ride from Koilon or Kollam to Trivandrum is not possible you know you cannot drive or ride safely to reach your destination in that time so we used to be real hooligans during college but you know time mellows us down so we were uh, on a borrowed rx100 so the plan was to we'll go there uh, we'll take the delivery of the bike and you know then we will ride down in two different bikes so we were in this rx100 which was pretty good um, it was also done up well it used to sound very loud the you know instead of the silencer flute we had a gi pipe welded that so you can just imagine how it sounds if you can't imagine then probably you know you should look for youtube videos of uh, silencer cords converted into uh, you know gi pipes uh, they were hilariously loud so we are we were riding two guys and you know during those days especially in kerala nobody used to wear helmets so you know we had one helmet so the rider was wearing i was like you know thinking that probably we will get the helmet when we will buy the bike or probably we will do something so we were least bothered about that so we were going um, and on the highway there is this very prominent junction so people who do not know this route will not understand this but there was this very prominent junction where there was a traffic signal and this traffic signal uh, basically was manned by a traffic police we didn't have signals back then so this traffic police uh, actually gives a stop sign to the traffic which is coming from our direction and we come to a halt and from a distance i could hear something like you know a very stressed a uh, very raspy note coming from a distance and as, as the sound grew louder it was like you know a b you can you can hear a b so it was like that and kept on growing 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 and finally we have one shogun coming and pulling right next to us so this guy you know i still remember he very vividly he was wearing a jeans he had uh, a pair of shoes also then he was wearing a jacket not the riding jacket but a black jacket and on top he had a helmet a black helmet with a visor which was also black so you know i don't know what kind of transpired between my friend and this guy but 
both of them kind of gave each other signals and they were ready to race and i also kind of silently understood that that is going to happen so as soon as the traffic cop gave us a signal we immediately took off and the first 10 meters or 20 meters rather you know because i'm little forgetful of how long the distance was but uh, definitely we took off much you know faster than this guy and i almost fell down this bike the rx100 almost did a wheelie and the traffic police also turned and looked at us and within that 20 meter we kind of lost the race like you know after we took the lead then the shogun started to come in the power zone in the power band it, it kept on pulling it kept on pulling and then there is this two kilometer straight stretch that you can see and the shogun just disappeared you know so it was pretty insulting for me as well as my friend like both of us were like you know how did that happen you know we we used to we are Yamaha fanboys. We used to think that we are best riders. You won't believe the kind of riding that we have done in college. Nothing to boast about. We never went for races and stuff. But we were reckless. You know, we used to be those guys who would directly, you know, ride towards a bus head on. And then at the last moment, we'll take a, you know, we'll just flick the bike out of the bus's route. So, you know, that that is how crazy we were. And especially, you know, kids of that age are crazy. So this was an insult, you know, this was a very horrible insult. So in about 20 minutes, we catch this guy. And guess what? This guy was caught when he was, you know, on the side of the road having a cup of tea. So that was also pretty harsh. So what we did is we kept on going. We didn't talk about that much i don't remember if we had a conversation you know it's almost two decades now uh, that this happened and then you know slowly we pull out into the showroom and you know to understand how insulted my friend was he went ahead and he cancelled the delivery you know he just said that i don't want the bike i want my money back you know uh, Probably you guys from rest of the India won't understand this, but you know, the RXs had right from RX 100 time had a waiting period in Kerala. Even RX 135s had waiting period. You were like, you cannot get a bike even if you go and throw 1 lakh rupee at, you know, the sales guys. So finally, you know, the moment he said, I don't want the bike, you, you could see the eyes literally getting lit the sales guy's eyes literally getting lit because he could actually go ahead and you know flip that bike for a 5000 rupee over the you know actual price of the bike even we could do that if we say that you know we are just ready to sell our delivery to somebody else you know you, you can make money because these guys had a list of people who are in the waiting list and the waiting list was almost over a month so it was not easy so this guy just did that and you know we were like i was like dude what happened so he's like no i don't feel like getting an rx anymore so i was like okay so we discussed other stuff there is you know since we came to trivandrum we just went around the city a little bit you know there are some attractions there is a nice beach so we've been all places then there is this famous electronics market in trivandrum which is not there in Kollam at that time so we visited there checked out some mobile phones and stuff then you know we just came back with you know the money that he had I think he had around 55,000 odd I don't remember exactly how much so in the next three four days this guy goes around and meets every possible mechanics in the you know region he was in and then he finds a shogun it was pretty beat up but he bought it so you know that was his shift from yamaha to shogun like you know he got so insulted that it was like you know something that he had to have and experience himself so um, i've ridden his bike about two or three times before i actually bought my own bike so 
um, never really enjoyed it first of all because you know the gears were all wrong um, we are so used to yamaha that you know we we will just blindly shift you know we will all not even think how you know the gear pattern is and every time we wrong shift the shogun we are like pretty annoyed um, not only that the parts were also a problem so we still kept on that war going on only one of us went to the dark side so you know we lost one of our best uh, you know friends who was part of our gang is now part of the suzuki gang so this war continued then we all moved on with life so finally um, you know i'll i'll take you guys back to the timeline where i decided to purchase this uh, shogun so we actually uh, it was a friday a friday afternoon rather so office was pretty lean and we were just sitting and planning of what to do during the weekend you know and having discussions people were already you know leaving because they there are some people in my team who used to work in different shifts so they were um, you know greeting each other saying happy weekend stuff and also it was a free time so i started browsing a bit um during that time you didn't have facebook marketplace but there were facebook groups so people usually used to sell things on facebook groups so i was just looking around and finally in a yamaha group i saw suzuki shogun so you know before um actually going for this uh, um search i used to look at olex at that time olex has come and suzuki shoguns were bloody expensive like 65 70000 i'm talking about 2015 so first of all these bikes were rare you know even during the time when these bikes were actually like you know let let me put this into perspective like i have been um in kerala for 4 years during engineering and from 2010 uh i mean 2009 onwards till 2019 i've been in kerala i can count on my fingers how many times i can i have actually seen a shogun other than mine you know it's it's that rare even in kerala there was a time when there used to be a lot of shoguns but most of them went to bangalore so you know this is this is kind of special so um i was browsing through and finally i saw this listing and the bike was advertised for 20000 rupees so that was stupid money for a shogun because you know i have never seen a shogun at that price range so i quickly decided to send this guy a message who is also you know a common friend i met him once uh, plus you know this guy is on team bhp he is there on uh, various facebook groups he stays the same he has an rd i have an rd he has several rxs i have several rxs so he was a guy that shared the passion so when i saw him selling it at that price i was like shocked but still you know you have to get cheeky because how can you be uh, the best negotiator if you don't negotiate on everything so i just asked him what is going to be the price that will take this bike out of you today so he said i can do 15 so that was like you know awesome in you know i just asked he gave me 5000 rupees discount already the deal was sweet at 20 but now at 15 it is sweeter so i just quickly ran the um, bike number on the mvd site and i found out that the bike had fitness for another 3 years which was even awesome so basically i can just take this bike fix it and then you know ride it for another 3 years without worrying about the fitness so he gives me his brother's number i call his brother he says okay come over at this time i go there where he asked me to come i call him around 20 calls no answer so i was like oh crap so then i again you know tried him one more time thinking that okay if he doesn't pick up i'm going now and i was cursing myself and i thought that maybe you know this deal was actually too good to be true so mix feelings i gave him another call and he picks up and he said that i was i don't remember what he was doing but he was busy so he says i'll come in 5 minutes so i go follow him 
and I go to his house and there is a blue RD, original Kerala registration RD chained to a pole. So I said, I'm like, you know, who does this? You know, why, why have you chained this RD to the pole? So he just said that, you know, this is how we keep stuff. So then I look further and I see, I don't know, maybe, you know, three or four RX. There was an RXG with an original sticker, RX100. There was an RX with the imported sticker as well. So I was like pretty, you know, happy to be there at that time. Then, you know, there is a uh, gray color Shogun standing there. So this guy says, this is the bike. So I'm like, this gray color bike is mint. You know, it's gleaming. You, you cannot basically express that, you know, the I, I haven't seen a bike out of the factory looking like that. So it was beautiful from every bloody angle. So I was like, you know, there's no way it is this bike. Plus, I remember seeing the pictures and the pictures was of a black bike. So this guy says, oh, if that is the case, then the bike is somewhere else. You have to come with me. So I was like, shit, you know, somebody could have really taken this guy for a ride. You know, if I would have just driven out of that place saying that, okay, this is a bike, the, his brother would have cursed him and killed him. I know, you know, his brother is also a viewer of this channel and he will definitely have a laugh when he will hear this, but this is what happened. So then finally, we go to his other house, which is at the corner of the end of the world. So, you know, night time. So, so I'm actually greeted with this bike whose image you see on the screen. So, it is looking okay, you know, it's not as sad as you would think it to be. But there, I, I could definitely see a hole in the tank plus like you must have noticed in the image the throttle cable was broken. So, there is no way that I could ride that bike out of that house at that time of the night. So, that kind of made me very impatient. Like, I was like, you know what the hell, I'm here at the corner of the end of the world and, you know, there is this bike that I'm ready to buy, I have cash in my pocket and this is what is happening. So, we decided to come the next day. Obviously, you know, my friend, a friend's mother used to stay there. So, we respected her privacy as well because it was quite late. It was almost around 8.15, 8.20 in the night. So then what I did is I couldn't sleep the night. Um, you know, all those Shogun things kept on coming in my head. I was like, I wanted to own one. Like this thing was growing on me. So somehow we, you know, pushed the night through and then I called uh, another friend of mine uh, who also has an RX uh, Tiger, whose Tiger, you know, I have restored and it's featured on this channel. So, both of us take my RX100, we ride towards there and he is like, he is another Yamaha fanboy. So, he is saying that, you know, we have to take a bottle to fill petrol. So, I was like, yeah, I know because the bike is standing. He says, no, 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 it's not to pour in the bike, it's to pour on the bike and light it on fire. So, I was like, okay. So, I kept on hearing his taunting, you know, things. He is like, pulling my leg throughout the journey is saying that Shogun, okay, we used to hate Shogun. So, you know, I'm, he was not my college friend. But, you know, this is how the uh, Yamaha cult and Suzuki cult was in Kerala. Like, everybody knew there was a war going on. So, finally, we reached here um, at the destination. So, we have the... Uh, you know, accelerator cable, but the uh, Phillips head screw on the, uh, you know, accelerator is kind of gone. So, you, there is no way you can open it. So, I slowly roll it out of the house so that they don't see my bike fixing anymore and they can close the door and they can go back to whatever they were doing. So, ultimately what happens is uh, we change the cable, we pour some petrol and couple of kicks the bike comes to life there is a slight leak a lot of smoke 
because I think it was burning oil at that time. Um, so finally, we reach a petrol pump to fill the petrol. Till there, I was like going easy because there was like uh, two liters of petrol, and we almost leaked out around half a liter. Till there, um, so finally at this petrol pump, uh, everybody is looking at us. They are like, you know, thinking what kind of crap bike have they come in like you know it was all covered in dust and all but I had a year to year grin you know I finally owned this the bike was you know pretty okay till then because I was riding pretty slow because you know first of all the tires were kind of aired out so we had to air the tire so after we filled the bike with petrol and then we aired the tires the tires were dry rotten by the way you know, then I decided to see how fast it goes. So there is this stretch um, in Trivandrum. It's basically very famous and very infamous for street races and accidents. Um, it's it's basically because this particular stretch had a straight, uh, almost about one kilometer straight, uh, straight stretch with no by roads connecting on the road and this road is almost like four lane wide on each side so people go crazy um, so 80 kilometers per hour is not something dangerous on that road so we tried pulling it till around 80 kilometers per hour and then the bike actually started coming in its true colors immediately we were greeted with a signal so we had to slow down uh, so I kind of slowed down and then the signal became green. <laughs> so the Yamaha gear changing pattern is still in my head. So I went up and you know started uh, downshifting like I would downshift on a Yamaha. But even at a 20 kilometer speed this bike was still you know pulling effortlessly. There was good torque. So that is the day I actually enjoyed the gearing and the you know low torque that this bike actually has so it was fun all the way till home we rode really well so finally it came home i was pretty impatient i wanted to see what is there under this bike how does it look what is the chassis how is the electricals i wanted to see everything i was like very impatient so from the same shop where we bought the uh, accelerator cable we also ended up getting the uh, body panels, uh, sticker kit, a wiring loom. So we got almost everything that is needed for me to fix this bike. Uh, so I actually went ahead and took apart this bike. I immediately started a thread on Team BHP. I went ahead and started a thread on XBHP. So the moment I did that, I started getting messages from people, you know, who were really interested to see if they can buy the bike so i was also pretty you know surprised like you know how can you get another one if you sell this one so i was like no i'm not letting this go but then there was this one kid who was very persistent who kept on you know requesting me and then who kept on saying that please let me have this bike it is my long term dream etc etc and finally i also thought i had more than the number of bikes that I can put in my garage with, without getting them bet. So I finally thought that I'll, you know, hit him with a crazy figure. So I hit him with a number. So the number was not uh, kind of obscene, but it was crazy enough for me. I was little cheeky. So I went ahead and threw that number at him and he said, sir, give me a week's time. So I also forget, I also forget that, I mean, I also forgot that I gave him that kind of a number and then this guy calls me saying that, sir, can I come and pick the bike tomorrow? I sold my bike today. So he had a unicorn which he sold. So it, it sounded really, you know, sad to me and I thought that I have kind of crossed my lines when I did that. So what I did is uh, in the price I reduced 5000 bucks I actually went ahead and threw a new set of tires with it I also 
you know did some uh, gave him some extra spares like there was a brand new uh, old stock uh, meter console which is in itself was around seven eight thousand rupees at that time um, i gave that to him as well so this guy takes off very happy very excited so he came with a brother his brother came on a cbr and he gave me that look dude what the hell are you selling my younger brother you know this is a piece of crap so it was a restored bell you know it was not the you know i shouldn't say this but i will just say it the piece of crap that i bought for 15000 rupees it was definitely you know well done it was built well i didn't touch the engine because uh, you know that was one area that i was not very great at that time um, we changed the rings but uh, oil seals and all we didn't but when we changed the rings we noticed that there was a lot of oil in the crank so one of the prius owners have actually overfilled uh, oil in it so that seeped into the crank um, so we drained all that oil and the smoking issue went off but the only problem was there was rust in the tank we though we got it repaired at that time you know you could actually in the one of the previous owners of this bike actually used this word a trip of mars is easier than buying a tank for this bike at that time it was very difficult you know shogun leave shogun inside any suzuki part was difficult to procure at that time if we were not getting yamaha parts you know so you can imagine so finally i tell him that you know when you are refueling the tank make sure you turn off the tap and then refuel because you know otherwise the uh, pressure with which the fuel comes in will agitate the entire uh, rust inside the tank though we have rinsed it couple of times there is still rust uh, and it will block the carburetor and then you will have an issue so this guy kind of forgot that um, because you know he was also used to a four stroke bike so he went ahead and he filled the tank without turning off the tap and what we feared actually happened so this guy gives me a call saying that sir i did this now what so i said uh, just remove the fuel uh, pipe and see if the fuel is coming so he said fuel is coming but the bike is not starting so then i said okay you do one thing first of all you buy a fuel filter a brand new fuel filter because the fuel filter that you might have might have gone bad so um, let's just discard it and buy it from the shop so there are shops where you can buy uh, generic fuel filters so he bought a fuel filter and then i told him to find any local mechanic ask him to just take out the carburetor clean it and put it back so after that i was back to whatever i was doing and this guy gives me another call he says sir this guy is asking for 7000 rupees i was like what the hell 7000 rupees for what so looks like his brother kind of got angry on him and he repeated everything that the mechanic said sir he said that the silencer is completely blocked uh, and uh, you know there is too much smoke coming in and the oil is completely black uh, and it will take about 3 days for him to fix it because parts are not available so i was like i was feeling very sad because this guy promised his dad that today he is going to get a brand new bike and you know, now he is kind of stuck so what i do is i take off i go and i reach there i park my car and i go to this guy the mechanic is like i asked him what happened to the bike so he said the silencer is blocked we have to tear open the silencer and we have to burn the flute and we have to you know clean the complete uh, you know oil which is in there and also the valves have gone bad because there is too much of smoke so i said wait a minute what so he said i uh, so i was like valves so do you know this is a two stroke bike so he is like yeah i had a bike like this and i used it for 6 years so i was like okay and he said i also worked with tvs for almost like a decade so i was like okay so that are some strong credentials go on so finally this guy looks at me and he says that uh, so i need 3 4 days to fix it 
So I said, do you even know what a two stroke is? So now the guy is little, you know, defensive. He is looking at me, he is giving me a stare. And I said that, do you, what you just told me is not applicable on a two stroke. Two strokes smoke, they create smoke. And secondly, the silencer is not a silencer, it's a chamber. So there is no way that this can get blocked. This is a silencer which is freshly powder coated. Do you understand what powder coating means? So he looks at me, he says, yeah. So he says, during powder coating, the entire silencer is kind of dipped in, you know, a chemical to strip out the original paint and everything. So all the thing is gone. I still give him a benefit of doubt, you know, talking to him in a professional language, but inside I am kind of going crazy. So I said, okay, can I borrow a Phillips screwdriver from you? So he said, yeah, go ahead, knock yourself out. So I take a Phillips screwdriver. So now I pulled out the carburetor. So this guy slowly comes and sits next to me. So he's like, now he knows that, okay, this guy knows something, he's doing something. So he's curious. So he comes there. So I take out the carburetor completely into all parts I just clean it completely blow it with as much air my lungs can hold and then finally I put it back so when I'm putting it back he is trying to help me he is you know passing me a flathead screwdriver etc and I was like okay so finally the moment the carburetor was put back I kick started the bike in one kick and he was like amazed. So I said, see, I was very angry and very pissed. I don't know. I gave him a piece of my mind and I told this guy, this is your first lesson on owning this bike. Make sure that you do your research well before you take it to a mechanic. Don't take it to an idiot mechanic like this because he is the reason why two strokes have gone extinct. He is the reason why these bikes are not there on the road anymore. So, that was the end of that conversation with him. After that, he took off in the bike. He called me in the night, said that he has reached home safely. And then, you know, he would send me pics. He actually sent me some pictures of his bike. It was looking really beautiful. He washed it, polished it very nicely. The paint job was a pretty nice paint job. I used one of my best painters on it. Um, so then slowly we lost touch. This guy, you know, was studying something. I think he was studying for uh, um, Indian Military Academy, I think. Um, so he was going for coaching. So he finally um, lost touch. He said that, you know, he cannot carry his phone. I don't remember exactly what happened. But then... Um, you know, somewhere down the line, I could get a call from one of my ex-bosses. He's like, I need to buy a showman. Find me one. So I said, okay. Uh, so we look at various options and finally, I said, see this very own bike on OLX for 30,000 rupees. So, which was priced reasonably. So I don't know what happened. I didn't want to call this guy because I kind of felt little guilty that, you know, I sold him the bike at a higher price and now he's selling it at a lower price so something might have happened. And then uh, I told my boss, I asked him to directly talk to him because of this reason. So this guy directly speaks to him and finally agrees to buy the bike for uh, 25,000. Uh, we go and pick the bike up uh, and I understood the reason why he sold it so cheap. He actually met with an accident. Uh, the tank was crashed, it was welded, uh, the crash guard was missing, the sari guard was missing. So, uh, I hope he is not badly hurt, but then the bike came back to us. And that's the circle of life, my dear friends. Um, I know it's a pretty long video and I hope that you really enjoyed this video because I put my heart out when I shot this video. So, please subscribe, like and share. I will keep on making videos in multiple languages till 
you know, we reach a particular uh, viewership population and then I will segregate channels based on language um, so that it is easy for you guys who are not, uh, you know, Malayalam speaking to understand what I say. So, thanks a lot. Good night. Bye-bye.